All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody, for another Home Launch Golf video. Um, I've kind of been out of town for the last week. I actually flew out of town uh, early the next morning after Rapsodo released this newest update. Uh, so that's what we're going to actually talk about today. And then we're going to do a, a short demo just to kind of see like how they've improved things um, from the last video that we did. All right, and you may have noticed that I do not have a hole in the screen anymore up here. Um, I actually did receive my new screen in that I said I ordered because uh, I put a hole in the, in the previous one. Uh, I did get that one. Uh, this new one put up a couple of days ago. Uh, I'm still kind of adjusting the tension and stuff, so it's a possibility that the ball might come back a little bit further or even a little bit faster uh, than it will when I'm finally done uh, setting everything. All right, real quick, I'm going to throw up on the screen here what the actual 2.9.3 update that came out um, about two weeks ago actually did. So basically in this, they, they claim that they improved the Rapsodo range and courses. They've updated the physics, uh, providing a more realistic gameplay experience, which is always welcomed. Uh, and then they've also updated the target aim on the 2D map in Rapsodo courses. So kind of like I talked about in my previous video, uh, it kind of sucked to kind of have to drag your finger around like the middle of the iPad to try to get the target to move uh, where you're actually aligned and aimed. So hopefully that, that that is fixed now and we can kind of test that out on the 2D mini map. All right, and then uh, another couple of things. I mean, they obviously had some bug fixes. Usually you get bug fixes and stuff with every update. Um, but one of the big ones I think that they had in the last update, I experienced this a couple of times, uh, using an iPad to airplay up to the projector, is that it would present a black screen when loading into the, the Rapsodo app. And so you would see the Rapsodo app display on your projector or TV or whatever it is that you're airplaying to, but it basically like acted as like a, almost an extended monitor or a second monitor. So I'm glad to see that they addressed that in this update because in the previous one, you kind of had to basically close out of the app and then relaunch it. All right, so real quick, what we're going to kind of do in today's demo is we're going to kind of test out what's improved in that update. So I'm going to go back out to Rapsodo Courses. We're going to go out to the familiar course that we've been testing with just to kind of see, you know, an Apple, the Apple's comparison um, as to what has changed. I really believe like what this addresses, like I said, is the aiming in the mini map on the side. And then also probably the ball physics of how the ball reacts once it hits the green, especially with higher spinning shots. So the setup today, uh, we're sticking with what we've been doing. We always set up to kind of like the minimum recommended specs um, by the manufacturer. And so Rapsodo, what they have is your minimum is, they say the device needs to be about 14 and a half feet from your net or your screen. So we've got it laser measured back here. It's 14 and a half feet to the impact screen. And then the minimum ball flight recommended is eight feet. And so we've got the red T down here to kind of mark out. So we've got eight feet of ball flight and we've got six and a half feet between the, the ball and the actual device for a total of 14 and a half feet. All right, so we've got the device powered on. So we're going to launch the app real quick. So just after launching the app, a lot of times like before, like this is where you'd kind of get that black screen that they were kind of talking about. It would still display up here on the projector, but it would just kind of go black and then you couldn't do anything. You'd have to close the app relaunch it and then you know it only happened a couple of times to me so it really wasn't that big of a nuisance but I know for some people it kind of it was almost like every other time um, or most of the time so I'm glad to see they address that in this update all right so we're going to go out to courses since I just power the device on it is going to connect it goes through my preferred method which is through my home wi-fi I don't make a direct connection to the device I do that so I can still have the ipad connected to my home wi-fi so I can airplay it up here um, on the projector screen all right, so we're going to do what we've been doing. Uh, we're going to go out to Payne's Valley um, down in Hollister, Missouri, uh, just so we have basically comparative holes that we're playing here so you can kind of see the differences. I will say because the more important thing in this demo uh, is really more the approach shot into the green. Uh, I've been playing the Tiger Tees, but we're actually going to step it back just to go a little bit shorter on these holes today so that maybe I can get um, some shorter clubs, some shorter approach shots with more spin on them just to kind of see how they react. All right, so we are indoors with the net. We are still using the Callaway RBT balls. Um, as you can see, it still says coming soon on the Titleist version of those. Um, so I haven't seen any update as to when they, those might be available. So it's still kind of just a you know work in progress, hopefully coming soon. All right, so we typically play holes four, five, and six here. We'll go graphics quality high. Uh, we'll turn terrain penalty on. Leave the putting at the standard default there and then turn on the elevation because that is going to give us the more uh, realistic view as far as um, the slope and everything in the course. All right, let's start simulation. All right, here's hole one. Um, you've probably seen the flybys uh, before. Uh, you can obviously tell that there is elevation and there's slope. Um, it looks a lot different than it used to when it first launched. Um, so real quick, let's kind of test out this mini map on the right hand side and see how that works. Okay, so yeah, you can just kind of touch wherever you want. Over here, um, your target aim is going to follow that. 
this is a really forward tee. <laughs> um, so hopefully we can get it down here to where it's a, kind of closer to a full wedge in so we can check the spin. We'll just kind of put it in the middle there, or maybe even aim a little bit higher there. All right, so we're just gonna to try to hit a little fairway finder here. Um, probably only taking 10 or 15 swings to warm up today. Back's kind of been bothering me a little bit, so um, I'm gonna to try to take it easy if we can. Just try to get in the fairway so we can get a wedge in. I pulled that a little bit. All right, so we got 90 yards left in, uh, so that is going to be kind of almost a full 58 degree for me here. Um, okay. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, but once I clicked on the mini map to aim the target, it looks like it kind of took my uh, shot location all the way back to the tee box on the mini map here. Um, I think it's still giving me the correct distance from my current position, but it looks like there might be a little bit of a bug or a glitch with that. All right, so I'm going to hit this about 90 yards, see if we can get it to stop. A little fat, so it might be a little short. Now it's going to make it there. Oh, okay. And that's kind of what I was wanting to see. So we carried it 93 yards, um, and basically you got 96 total. So you kind of saw it bounce a little bit forward, and then it kind of spun back just a little bit. So we ended in the auto two complete zone. So we're actually going to end up taking a birdie because um, I'm playing from the white tees today. All right, so here's the second hole we're playing, hole number five. Um, playing from the whites, it really does shorten this one up to 121. So 121, uh, it's a full... Pretty full 50 degree wedge for me. Um, just a little slightly up the hill here, but hopefully we can get this one to stop as well and we get another birdie here. A little long, but it does come back. And so you saw the total went up to 124, but then it actually came back, so it, it finishes with a total of 123. So liking what I'm seeing so far, we still landed in the auto two complete zone. So this is actually going to be a par. Didn't get it close enough in that 10 foot circle there to get the birdie on this one. All right, still one under going to the last hole here. All right, so here's our, our third and final hole. Uh, just kind of a straightforward par four uh, with us playing the white tees today. That bunker in the fairway, the bunkers in the fairway really aren't in play. Um, but yeah, all right, so again, not really trying to drive the green. We're just going to try to take it easy, you know, hit a little fairway finder, kind of put it at the end of the fairway, and then maybe hopefully give us just like a, a 30 or 40 yard shot uh, so we can see kind of a, a short chip and see what kind of action we can get on that. And unfortunately, trying to take a little bit off the swing, that can't happen. All right, so unfortunately, we didn't stay in the fairway, and I got the terrain penalty on. So as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, it does say rough is at 90%. Um, so I feel like I'm probably going to lose 10% or have to hit this 10% farther uh, than 46 yards. So we're going to try to hit this somewhere around like a 50-yard feel. Let's see if we can get this to hop up there and stop. Way deep. Yeah, I don't think you can catch a flyer out of the rough. I don't think it's that advanced. A little 22 yard. I mean, I didn't get any really spin on that. I mean, we can see, I mean, it was like 4,000. Uh, obviously, it was kind of coming, I think, out of the rough again. So, you know, I would expect that kind of, you know, roll out for that. All right. Unfortunately, we gave the birdie back because now we finished that auto two complete zone. And so that's going to give us, unfortunately, a bogey here on the last hole. All right. So that's going to kind of do it for today's demo. Uh, I just wanted to get in here and quickly kind of show you uh, what I think they've tried to improve with this update. Um, I will say I think the ball physics, especially with the spin shots into the green, uh, look much better, look more realistic, and you can actually probably hit your actual shot um, and get it to stop. Whereas before you were kind of gaming the system by like trying to land it 8 or 10 or 12 yards short, 
uh, of the actual hole because you knew it was going to automatically bounce forward that much. So I think they did a great job with the ball physics. However, we obviously saw that there's still kind of a little bit to be worked out on the mini map. It looks like to be kind of a bug or a glitch. You know, after you hit your first shot, if you touch the mini map, it seems like it takes it back to the teeing location. So maybe in the next update, which we've been kind of seeing them come, I think at the end of the month. So hopefully we're just a couple more weeks away from from maybe them launching another one for us. And hopefully in that one, they can kind of take care of that glitch. Another thing I would add that I'd like to maybe kind of see, just so you can kind of dial your target in just a little bit better, um, is kind of going back to where you can click on the mini map and actually maybe get it more of a full screen view or a bigger view or a pinch to zoom just so that you can kind of really put that target exactly where you want it. All right, I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. Um, you know, if you like this kind of content, uh, like this stuff, make sure to like the video if you got something out of it. Um, if, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to help the channel out, please do so. Uh, I'm going to continue to make videos on the MLM2 Pro. We're probably going to go through a, a new accuracy series because I haven't really done an accuracy series uh, for quite a while. So we'll put it up against my Foresight GC2. Uh, in a couple of videos and we'll kind of test out not only the accuracy of the device but we'll kind of go through like we did with the Garmin and we'll test out the accuracy of the device in the different apps you can use uh, with the MLM2 Pro. All right so stay tuned for those future videos. Uh, again I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.